What exactly determines what audio file quality even means? Does it have inherent value, enough value to sway someone to spend thousands of dollars more theoretically on the same thing? Today we found out. Let's get to it. For those of you who have joined me in the past and follow along, you know damn well I don't play these reindeer games and I am a no-nonsense kind of guy. So when I see or hear about something being audiophile quality, my radar goes off and I'm immediately suspicious. I want to know why. What is it about the product that makes marketing teams or consumers deem it audiophile quality? What is audiophile quality? Well, generally the term audiophile quality is the idea of pushing the boundaries of sound reproduction, really trying to capture the essence of the original sound. We're not talking just your everyday audio gear here. This term usually comes up when we talk about high-end speakers, headphones, turntables, amplifiers, CD players, DACs, and even certain audio formats and recordings. But here's a little secret for you. While audiophile quality signals the highest performance, it's also a phrase that gets thrown around in marketing quite a bit. Sometimes the increase in sound quality isn't as proportionate to the increase in cost as you'd think. The law of diminishing returns covers this. We see quite a bit of it in audio gear. A moderate investment can get you great sound, but if you're aiming for absolute perfection, the last bit of improvement can cost a lot, lot more. And trust me, I've met plenty of people who debate this all the time. While there's a huge noticeable difference when you're comparing entry-level to mid-range gear, once you start getting into the high-end stuff, the difference becomes a lot more subtle, a lot more subjective. So not everyone will find audiophile quality equipment to be worth the added investment, especially if you're just casually enjoying your music. This echelon of sound is really for those who live and breathe this stuff, those who have trained their ears to catch the tiniest details and subtleties in audio quality. It's also good to mention that even if you have an ultra high-end speaker, it won't do much for you in a poorly acoustically treated room or if paired with lower end gear. The true value of audiophile quality isn't just in the individual parts. It's about the whole system, how well everything fits together and how much attention you've paid in setting it all up. I always say this, your system is only as good as its weakest link. Sound is a personal experience, right? Sure, there are ways to measure a product's quality, but even if a device ticks all the boxes on paper, the way we each experience sound can be wildly different. So while some folks might find a lot of value in audiophile quality gear, others might not pick up on or prioritize these improvements. It's really all about what sounds good to your ears. So now that we have a good grasp on audiophile quality, what exactly makes a CD player audiophile quality and should you spend all that hard-earned money on something like that? When crossing over to the other side, there are a few factors to consider. If you are considering a CD player and not a transport, the DAC or digital to analog converter is something to highly consider. This is like the heart of the CD player, turning the digital data from a CD into an analog signal that can be played through your speakers. Now, now, an audiophile level CD player should have a really, really nice DAC doing this conversion job with minimal noise and distortion. Then there's the actual mechanism. This is the part of the CD player that reads the data from your CD. A good player, the kind an audiophile might go for, has a high quality transport that's all about reading that disc accurately and without errors. Now you might think, it's just digital data, Mike. It either gets read correctly or it doesn't right? You've heard this before, but it's a little more complex than that. The transport needs to spin the disc at a very consistent speed because inconsistencies can lead to timing errors or jitter, which can degrade the sound quality. The output stage is also very important, a huge factor here. This part of the CD player takes the signal from the DAC, amplifies it, and then sends it off to your speakers or amplifier. The quality of the output stage can have a significant effect on the sound quality for a few reasons. It needs to accurately amplify the signal from the DAC without introducing distortion. Any flaws in the output stage could color the sound or add noise, which obviously isn't what you want when you're striving for high quality audio reproduction. The output stage also needs to deal with impedance matching. Without getting too deep into the technical side of things, impedance is essentially 
essentially the resistance to the flow of the audio signal. The output impedance of your CD player needs to be lower than the input impedance of your amplifier or speakers for the system to work properly. A high quality output stage ensures this matching is done right to prevent loss of signal quality. The output stage often determines what connectivity options are available. For a versatile setup, having balanced XLR or unbalanced RCA outputs and definitely a digital output for use with an external DAC are all important factors. The overall build of the CD player matters too. We're talking about a well put together, sturdy design that cuts out vibrations and electromagnetic interference. Think heavy duty chassis, different compartments for different components, and the best materials throughout. After all, they don't put Ferrari motors inside of a Civic shell for good reason. This also plays into the pride of ownership. If you pay top dollar for something, you want it to look the part. We definitely can't forget about the power supply. This is huge in any component. A power supply isn't just about providing energy to the different parts of the CD player. It's about providing clean and stable energy. A lower quality power supply can introduce electrical noise into the system. This noise can then be amplified along with the audio signal, leading to a less clean sound with more distortion. The power supply is something manufacturers should never, ever scrimp on. Then there's jitter which I mentioned earlier, those annoying timing errors that can happen during the digital to analog conversion. Good CD players are designed to keep jitter to a minimum, making your sound clearer and more precise. I have an entire video dedicated to jitter that you should check out. Finally, I think it's important to note overall features and compatibility. An audiophile CD player often supports various formats like CDR and SACD. Extra features like balanced outputs, digital outputs can also up the appeal of a player for a serious audiophile. Now you might be wondering if it's possible to find a reasonably priced CD player that checks all these boxes. The answer the answer is absolutely yes. I'll drop some options in the description below. You don't need to shell out thousands for a top of the line CD player. In fact, many reasonably priced players on the market already offer these features to a high standard without the need to venture into premium territory. The key is to ensure your entire sound system harmonizes well together. So long as you've got a well-crafted CD player in the mix, you should be able to fully enjoy your CD collection without any issues. Now, in my own setup, I always add an external DAC to the equation. Personally, I find the DACs in most CD players to be, I don't know, a bit underwhelming compared to a standalone high quality DAC. But hey, that's just my preference. If you're leaning in this direction, then a well-built CD transport might be just the right thing for you. Remember guys, it all boils down to what sounds best to you. Your ears are the final judge here. I hope this helps bring some clarity to the situation. My goal is to always steer you in the right direction. I use my own experiences to craft these videos so they can help us all grow. I do have a Discord, Patreon, and online hi-fi clothing shop. Links are in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, I think you should shake a leg with the like button. Subscribe to the channel to help me grow and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I'll see you on the next one, friends. Take care.